люблю на музику піду, як музика тай заграє, забуду я піду. Ой, тай ду на ду на ду на, ой, тай ду на дана, ой, тай ду на ду на ду на, ой, тай ду на дана. Як я чую музиченьку, зачую, зачую, болить мене голова, я в дома не ночую. Ой, тай ду на ду на ду на, ой, тай ду на дана, ой, тай ду на ду на ду на, ой, тай ду на дана. a group called Slu High and a traditional Ukrainian folk song, one that has many different names from Kolomeka to simply Oitaduna. And uh, Slu High has monikered it. I like music very much. Dobry den, shinovni radio suchachita, vitayu vas vsich na radio predachu nash holos radio krinskoho korinya, yaka podiasi vam si hodni tak yaki kojni serede, sedinaci toy do trinaci toy hodene, na radio stanci chly, sto adeni sim fm, umisti na naimo. Pre mikrofoni si hodenu je pavlina, a na stupno hodenu budas vame oksana. Diaku yus chorishle pere budas name na stupne kvo hoden, me maimo duje si kabi na vene na siodnishni prohami. Hello there and welcome to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio, coming to you on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. I'm Paula demchik Makori Pukrinske Pavlina, and I'll be your host for this first hour. Oksana will be here at 12 noon to host the show in Ukrainian. I'm delighted to have you with us. We've got a great program lined up for you in this hour. We've got two interviews and a mix of old and new music. On Ukrainian Jewish Heritage, part one of an interview with Alti Rodol, co-director of Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, a sponsor of this series. She'll be telling us all about a new museum exhibit in Ukraine, an updated version of a very popular one from Canada. Also, a new East European musical ensemble from Toronto, Blisk, is here on the west coast of Canada. 
I had a chance to speak with them before they hit the road, and we'll share that chat with you in this edition. As well, our usual proverb of the week, other items of interest, and great Ukrainian music, including some new tunes. So stay tuned for all of that. But right now, we've got another oldie but goodie, popular Ukrainian singer Oksana Mucha from her CD Reshita and a traditional Ukrainian folk song, Oi Chorna, Yasi Chorna, I'm a Dark-Eyed Beauty. Чорнява, як циганка, Щем всі полюбила, Щем всі полюбила, Чорнявого Іванка. Щем всі полюбила, Щем всі полюбила, Чорнявого Іванка. Іванка та Іванка, Сорочка вишива, Ще й на бороді ямка 
And a great blast from the past there that was Rushnichok from Montreal and a song about the wedding of the mosquito and the fly, Komarik. And uh, a sad note uh, to add to that is uh, the guitarist and vocalist who is a member of that group, Rushnichok, Andrei Harasimovich, recently passed away at age 71. Before Rushnichuk, you heard another Montreal group, Cherim Shena, and has a girl group that has been around for a long, long time, and a traditional Ukrainian folk song, Porizalam Palchak, I Cut My Finger. And with that, we're going to be focusing on another Montreal group. This one is Previt, and this is a brand new tune recently released, hot off the press, and I don't think it's actually on the press yet. It's a kind of um, beta version of one of the many songs that will be coming out on a new CD put out by Previt. This one is entitled Pridut Shtjedni Le Jurbe, Another Day of Sorrow Comes. Upalo. 
A new musical ensemble from Toronto will be touring the west coast of Canada this month, and it is a female quartet called Blisk that specializes in East European folk music, including, of course, Ukrainian. Two of the members are Ukrainian-Canadian, one of them whose music Nash Holos listeners would be familiar with and who we've had on the show before, Stacey Yerofayeva, with the group Dovira. And they're actually here now, but I caught up with Stacy and Stefania and the other girls shortly before they left Toronto. So welcome back to Nashola, Stacy. Yes, thank you for having me. It's so great to be back this time with my new project, Blisk. Yeah. So we're very excited. Yeah. So, uh, so tell us about Blisk. So Blisk is definitely quite a collaboration of these wonderful ladies that are here with me, the uh, wonderful uh, Evelina Ferenc, who is actually from Poland. Hi, everyone. Dobry den. <laughs> Dobry den. You sp- and you speak Ukrainian. Awesome. <laughs> and then we've got Stefania, who's Ukrainian-Canadian. Hi, everybody. Hi, Stefania. And we- from Kazakhstan, we've got Ekaterina. Hi there. Wow. Yeah, so it's a collaboration. I'll pass it off to Stefania. Okay. Hi, Stefania. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Great. So you're the second Ukrainian Canadian in the group. And how did you meet Stacy and how did you get involved and get this group off the ground? Well, there's a really great group of people that celebrate folk music here in Toronto. And Stacy and I met through a group in Toronto called Cosa Collective. Yeah. 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 So we used to sing together with that sort of community group. And then Stacey, Evelina and I did a performance as part of something called Art Spin. And we just really loved singing together. And we thought, oh, my God, we should put together a female group. And then one thing led to another. And we ended up with this quartet. Great. Now, um, had you, this was where you met at the Cosa Collective and you, um, Evelina, how did you get involved with them? Oh, that's a very interesting story. I actually came here to Canada about four years ago. Mm. I was leading Polish singing workshop oh. and I met all the kitchens and I actually met my husband also. And then I met all the girls because we're part of the same community in Toronto. We are all crazy Eastern Europeans here. <laughs> so we found each other very uh, quickly. And yeah, here I am. I also speak Ukrainian because I actually lived in Ukraine, in Lviv, oh. in 2000 for a year. So that's why I learned the language and songs. And here I am. Wow. Okay. So all your East Europeans always speak several languages. So I guess it wasn't that hard for you to pick up Ukrainian in that one year that you lived there. <laughs> no, it would be very easy, especially... You are surrounded only by Ukrainian people. You have you have to speak the language because you know otherwise uh, you wouldn't. I wouldn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> and Ekaterina, what's your story? How did you get connected with these gals? We got acquainted through a friend of ours. I sing in a Balkan ensemble called Medan Glass, oh. and one of the members, uh, Mario, he was part of Cosa Collective and often sang with, with these girls and uh, they needed somebody to fill in for one of the shows. And then uh, I was just introduced to the band and yeah. And uh, in terms of Ukrainian heritage, I have some as well. <laughs> um, my great great grandmother came in from Ukraine in the beginning of the 20th century, just to settle and work the land. They were giving away land just like in Canada. So lots of Ukrainians came to Kazakhstan. Oh, okay. That's why. All right, that's interesting. I I knew that there were Ukra- quite a few Ukrainians there, but I didn't know how that worked. So, interesting. Ah, oh, okay. And you ended up in Canada when? I came in two thousand and one. Okay. All right. So two Canadian born, two new Canadians. That's a nice mix. And so no, just one, just one Canadian born. Oh yeah, really? Just oh, that's right, Stacy. You were born in Ukraine too. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was born in Kiev, and and then I came here when I was eleven to Toronto, Canada, and now I found these girls, and it's just such a clash of cultures, but in a in a really good way, and we hope to showcase that through our music if any of you guys are able, album, able to come out we also do a lot of balkan stuff too not just ukrainian mm-hmm. ekaterina the one that you just spoke to she's kind of 
uh, the master, uh, literally, or I think she uh, she studied that quite heavily, um, different languages, Bulgarian, as well as Serbian and Macedonian. So we do a lot of stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I, all those cultures that you mentioned, I love their music, especially Macedonian. It's a lot, a lot like Greek almost, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Similar language. And then, yeah, well, and interesting is there's just, it all kind of, it's like a, gra like a gradient, isn't it? <laughs> the different kinds of styles. And, and so you all have musical background, like you've been trained musicians. I got into music about eight years ago. This is Stefania. <laughs> oh, okay. He got music through a band called Lemon Beckett Orchestra, who you probably have had uh, in Vancouver and Nanaimo a few times. Mm -hmm. I'm still with the group. I, I primarily dance in the group, but I also sing. Oh, I didn't realize they had dancers. Wow. Yeah, and, and I also dance in this group. So this collaboration involves um, a lot of percussion and po uh, polyphony, so multiple voices, as well as a dance element. Oh, okay. So it's, a it's not just a singing group, but you perform as well. Right. Exactly. And we teach dances to the audience. We like for people to get up and dance with us and clap with us. And oh. yeah, it's a very, very um, interactive show. Great. So then you're going to be in Vancouver as this pro as listeners are hearing this. July 6th, you'll be in Vancouver and then you're hopping over to the island. Yep. Then we head over to Victoria where we have a, a show on the 9th and another one on the 10th. Okay. After that, we'll be heading off to Nanaimo and then back to Vancouver or to the mainland to Lions Bay and then following that to Duncan for the 39 days of July festival for a couple days there and then to Parksville and then finally we end at the Harrison Arts Festival at Harrison Hot Springs. Well you got a few ferry trips in there. <laughs> That's okay you, you might see you might see whales and dolphins so it might be it's worth it. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> well, um, looking so forward to seeing you here. And uh, thanks for taking time out of your very busy day uh, rehearsing right now and probably getting packed up and ready for your tour. So have you been out west before, out to BC here at the coast? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I've been there a couple times already with Lemon Bucket, and I think the rest of the girls have been out there once or twice. I wasn't there. Ever. I've never been there. Oh. Um, I'm a fresh uh, immigrant here, so I'm still discovering the country. So I'm actually, I think, the most excited from everybody because <laughs> this will be my first time. <laughs> well, that's that's wonderful. So um, you'll also be on uh, the 12th, uh, 3 o'clock, on another program on uh, CHLY. And that'll be the Canadian song with James Casper. So safe travels and break a leg. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so you so much. much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And that is Blisk from Toronto East European Quartet with their signature song, Zemlya, and that is done in four languages. And again, Blisk is performing at the Vault Cafe at 9 p.m. on Friday, July 12th. And then back to the mainland to Lions Bay, B.C. for a performance on the 13th. And then back to the island July 14th and 15th. They'll be in Duncan at the 39 Days of July and also the Duncan Showroom. And then up north again to Parksville where they'll be performing on the 17th of July at Ground Zero Acoustic Lounge. Then their last stop will be Harrison Hot Springs on the mainland uh, for July 20th and 21st at the Harrison Festival Society. Again, that was Blisk from Toronto. Vyslúchite Radio Prahramu Náš Holos Radio Krínskoho Korinia na Radio Stancii CHLY 101 FM u místi na najmo. Hovorit Palina. You're listening to Náš Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio on CHLY 101.7 FM in na najmo. I'm your host, Palina. And now for a look at Ukraine's rich Jewish heritage, then and now. Brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. The Ukrainian Jewish Encounter is a Toronto-based, privately organized multinational initiative which has sponsored the series Ukrainian Jewish Heritage here on Nasholo since 2013. This series of vignettes, cultural capsules and interviews has opened a window on this hitherto little-known aspect of the Ukrainian experience. Alti Rodol is co-director of the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter. She's a historian, writer, former professor of Jewish history, and official advisor to the Government of Canada. She was educated at McGill, Oxford, and Hebrew universities in history and literature. Her research and writing has focused on aspects of identity, Jewish history and culture, and intercommunal relations. Alti has been instrumental in a project which began as an exhibition entitled A Journey Through the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter from Antiquity to 1914. It premiered in Toronto in 2015 and also traveled to Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Montreal. Last April 2018, Alti updated us on this project and other exciting UJE initiatives. These include an illustrated catalogue of the 2015 exhibit, which we recently interviewed here on the show, plans for an expanded exhibit in 2020 at the Royal Ontario Museum, and a travelling exhibit to Ukraine, which was recently launched as part of the Museums in Ukraine project. Alti is just back from the launch in Lviv and kindly agreed to tell us all about it. She joins us now by phone from Ottawa. Welcome back to the show, Alti. Thank you, Paulette. So it's great to have you, and it's great to be kept in the loop with this amazing museum project, not least of all to see what a so-called small project can morph into. Your exhibit, Journey Through the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter from Antiquity to 1914, only went to four cities in Canada, but out of it came a fabulous book that cataloged the exhibit, which is available free from UJE at your website, as well as this ROM exhibit and the one you just launched in Lviv. So welcome home from that trip, and how did that launch go? Well, there's a lot to tell Mm -hmm. in between the traveling exhibit in Canada and uh, the Lviv exhibit, there was a fair amount of interest expressed by uh, other cities in Canada, but also in the U.S. and Chicago and New York, California, that we should bring our exhibit there. Ah. And it was uh, an idea that came from museums and from community centers. Uh, we thought about it and thought that we might do it. But in the meantime, the proposal for an exhibit at the Royal Ontario Museum came up, and we thought, let's focus on that for now and put the other exhibit possibilities on hold. Oh. Uh, so we've been working now for the past two and a half years as a team, three curators, a lead curator appointed by the ROM, and two associate curators, myself, and there was Lush Country, who very mm-hmm. knowledgeable in Ukrainian literature and mm-hmm art, and so on. And the team has been working very well together, but it's a very different experience than the traveling community exhibit. This is very museum-grade, professional, a larger team of support and various expertise, and not so much posters, but primarily artifacts 
and uh, artworks and all that comes with a major museum exhibit. So that has been very interesting. But at the same time, we've been exploring uh, what might be done in Ukraine because expressions of interest came from several museums in Ukraine at the same time. Mm -hmm. And last summer, uh, 2018, a number of us, together with the small UJE team in Ukraine, traveled to 12 towns visiting uh, museums of history in these towns, meeting with the directors, telling them a little bit about what we do. And uh, we were very encouraged by the strong interest they had in uh, bringing content on the Jewish heritage uh, to their museums. Mm. Uh, this is uh, something which uh, one can understand in the light of the virtually complete absence of Jewish content during Soviet times in these right. museums. And the museums are still very much Soviet style. And uh, there is a also a cultural heritage tours that have increased in recent years. Mm -hmm. And these towns are receiving uh, groups of people who have an interest in the Jewish cultural heritage uh, that their ancestors lived in these towns. Mm -hmm. And uh, they look for anything that attests to it. And not much remains other than uh, abandoned cemeteries and uh, ruined synagogues and so on. And they come to the museum and look for something there and don't find it. And mm. and this may be part of the uh, explanation of why the interest is there. Um, so we've met younger, a younger generation of museum directors also. So we were very encouraged and intrigued by this interest and are in a position now to pick up on it and uh, possibly bring exhibits that tell about the Jewish heritage, not just in their region, but mm -hmm. throughout Ukraine, but giving them something extra for their particular locality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, one one museum in the larger city, in the Lviv, the Lviv Historical Museum, and actually the current director was director of the Museum of Ethnography in Lviv, the National Museum of Ethnography. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's been interested because we had developed a connection with him over the years. Uh, he had given a presentation at a conference UJE organized in 2010, mm -hmm. and we've been in touch. So he's expressed interest in bringing an exhibit on the history of Jews in Ukraine and of Ukrainian-Jewish relations over the centuries, and of course something on Galicia and Lviv. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sat on this for about two years, and uh, the actual momentum came during this visit in 2018. And we thought we were in a position to act on this, and they were interested and put us in their calendar. And in a very short time, we adapted the 2015 exhibit, which went only to 1914, to bring it to 1939. Oh, okay, you've updated it then. Yes, it meant adding a couple of panels. Mm -hmm. But we were extremely restricted by the number of panels we could have at the same time as being uh, quite fortunate to have the location that we were offered, which is the outside balconies and spaces, the courtyard of the Lviv Historical Museum. If anyone knows this venue, it's uh, quite uh, moving and interesting to see it. Uh, it's a Galician-Austrian-style um, Polish mansion, <laughs> yeah. uh, which uh, was turned into the museum. Oh. And uh, it has a very uh, strong circulation. I mean, there there are many visitors that come to this museum and school groups and so on. So when I was there the previous year in November, I was very impressed by how many uh, visitors it had. Huh? So we worked on it and it had to be, we were invited uh, that it should be both in English and Ukrainian because they have many tourists mm -hmm. in the summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were looking at uh, May through July. So to have it bilingual and in a limited, less than half the number of uh, posters that we had in the traveling exhibit in Canada. Oh. And also we didn't want a lot of text. So it's become something quite different, very little text, but still covering from ancient times to 1939 and uh, doing so mainly through images. Ah. Oh. Well, that's yeah. in interesting because the the book, the catalog that uh, that you've put out, that well cataloged that exhibit uh, from 2015, 
itself, it doesn't have a lot of text, but when we were talking about that, we reviewed the book uh, last month, and our reviewer, Myra Junick, said that there was so much, <laughs> every word counted, and you said that too, I think, when we spoke, that every single word, you know, had to double or triple duty because you wanted to keep it that way. And exactly, so, so you've exactly. Got, so this yeah. was a, a even more extreme challenge of this kind. <laughs> of uh, really reducing, always counting the words, <laughs> but not wanting to lose the essence. Right. So and I think we've succeeded. You know, someone who goes through the exhibit will learn a great deal. Mm -hmm. And the catalog has actually been translated to Ukrainian and oh. it's made available to visitors if they are interested. Wow. And it's, of course, on our website, uh, the yeah. PDF that can be downloaded. Yeah. But hard copies in Ukrainian are also available at the museum now during the exhibit. Wow. Um, yeah. But as I said, in addition, we wanted to highlight content of local interest. Mm -hmm. So we decided, first we were going to do something on Western Ukraine. Uh, when I started to collect material, I found that there's such rich content on Lviv itself. Mm -hmm and a few t surrounding towns that uh, limit, we decided to limit it to Lviv Oblast. Oh. So Lviv, and there are seven towns that we focused on mm -hmm. and, uh, and obtained material, uh, especially for the 1920s and 30s. And uh, this uh, material is largely photographed oh. of, uh, of life in uh, Lviv and these few towns. Uh, and it's... Uh, Focus is the diversity and vitality, the dynamic life that was in these towns and especially in the large uh, city of Lviv mm -hmm. in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, of course, there's the sad ending yeah. that under 1% of the uh, 109,000 Jews of Lviv survived. We are not focusing on how they died, but rather on how they lived. And that comes through very uh, dramatically and clearly in these photographs of community groups of various kinds, children, older people, a youth especially in their many different activities, sports clubs, the Zionist organizations, cultural groups, librarians, uh, uh, various groups that would meet and also occupations that, uh, that people uh, were active in. So we have on the ground levels around the courtyard, we have no text at all, just images wow. of life in the Lviv, whether it's uh, representing family and friends, you know, outings to the countryside, birthday parties, uh, various celebrations, or groups that uh, worked together in various uh, fields, whether it's students and teachers, and all these uh, different uh, dimensions of life. And we were given also one room in the interior of the museum, not a large room, but one that uh, motivated us to think about preparing a kind of multimedia installation depicting Jewish life in the 1920s and 30s. And uh, the room was actually even smaller than we had imagined when we actually came up with a uh, model of what we would do. Uh, so we were going to have two videos being shown simultaneously. A one showing uh, community groups of the kind that uh, I just spoke of, but for the other towns as well. And uh, between each town, we would zoom in on an ethnographic map, ah. which exists of Galicia, mm -hmm. uh, to show location and ethnic composition of these towns. So these were shtetls in Lviv, the bigger city where Jews were about a third of the population. In some of these shtetls, they were even a larger yeah. proportion, and some only 10%, but there were significant presence in these uh, smaller towns. What a brilliant idea, Alti. I, I think if you present those pictures of life, everybody knows now what happened. And of course, all you have to do is look around and you don't see that life anymore. And that, I think, has a, even a bigger impact than the horrific stories of death and loss. The collection of uh, the photographs uh, led me to an additional avenue, uh, which is uh, the photographs from Yad Vashem, ah. from the Hall of Names, they call it, mm -hmm. 
And uh, these photographs were attached to pages of testimony from surviving relatives or friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are portraits of individuals. So, uh, as I mentioned, we had uh, in mind to do two videos, one of groups and then another one of individuals. Mm -hmm. And as things evolved, the space was too small for two videos. So we integrated the two together, and so we have a panorama and individual faces. And it's these individual faces that were really very stirring, from small children Mm -hmm. to elderly people, many young people with their futures before Mm -hmm. them Mm -hmm. got short. I'm speaking with Alti Rodal, co-director of Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, about a museum exhibit launched in Lviv, Ukraine this past May. In part two of our interview, Alti describes some of the displays and artifacts in the museum exhibit, along with the fascinating stories behind their acquisition. As well, she'll share a bit about UJE's future plans. I'm Pavlina, producer and host of Nasholos Ukrainian Roots Radio. Until next time, Shalom. Ukrainian Jewish Heritage is brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. To find out more about their work, visit their website and follow them on Facebook and Twitter. Transcripts and audio files of this and earlier broadcasts of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage are available at their website, ukrainianjewishencounter.org, as well as at the Nasholos website, www.nasholos.com. Дочок задумав жениться, ой, сев дома, дома задумав жениться, ой, сев дома, дома задумав жениться, що старої не хочеться, молода не піде, ой, сев дома, дома молода не піде, ой, сев дома, дома молода не піде. Хоч вона піде, то не ляже спати. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не ляже спати. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не ляже спати. А хоч ляже спати, то не обернеться. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не обернеться. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не обернеться. Хоч обернеться, то не поцілує. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не поцілує. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не поцілує. Поцілує, обернеться сплюне. Ой, сир, дума, дума, обернеться сплюне. Ой, сир, дума, дума, обернеться сплюне. Що у тебе діду запинає борода? Ой, сир, дума, дума, запинає борода. Ой, сир, дума, дума, запинає борода. Дідочок, вранці на риночок, ой, сів дума, дума, вранці на риночок, ой, сів дума, дума, вранці на риночок, та купив на гайку, добро ютро тянку, ой, сів дума, дума, добро ютро тянку, ой, сів дума, дума, добро ютро тянку, що у тебе діду, що в кого я ворона.
from Winnipeg, Manitoba. That was a group called Molodsi, which means young people. From their second CD of traditional Ukrainian favorites, that was an instrumental version of Voroshka, the Gypsy. And before them was Korinya, they are an American group. And that song was another traditional Ukrainian folk song, Didochok, Grandfather. Tsyuhodenu bula z vame Pavlina. Na hadu ju vyslúchajte radio prohramu Náš holos, radio Nášho korinia. Zalašajte si z námi nastupnú hodinu. Dali perdi ju mikrofonu Oksani. Zaprošiu ju poslúchajte troche pro istóriu i tradícii rozpovíst Oksana. Ale perdi tiem ja hoču zalašajte vás tíkými slovami múdrostia. Kto rozumu nemaja, tomu i krasa nepomahaja. And our proverb of the week translates as Beauty will not help the fool. And that brings us to the end of the first hour of Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio here on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. Please stay with us as Oksana takes over the microphone to host the next hour. Meanwhile, please join me here again next Wednesday from 11 a.m. till 12 noon. And until then, do stay in touch with both Oksana and me via the Nash Holos Facebook page and our Twitter feed. In between broadcasts, please visit us online where you'll find transcripts and the podcast feed, audio archives, and other features. And that's at www.nasholos.com. So stay tuned next for the Nasholos Ukrainian Hour with Oksana, followed by Wellness Wednesday to learn how to be healthy naturally. And at 2 p.m., join Gord Bibby for two hours of great oldies on Groovin' with Baby G. I'm Pavlina. Thanks so much for listening. Do zusrichi. <laughs>